Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. This webinar is called Game On for Child Nutrition Staff. Over the course of the next 60 minutes or so, we will provide you with an overview of Action for Healthy Kids Game On program, some foundational information on policy and models to set the stage for this work, and we'll highlight how each of the steps, six steps within the program can fit the needs of child nutrition staff and increase your ability to collaborate with others in your school and be seen as the experts that you are on child nutrition. My name is Ellen Dillon. I am the Senior Manager of School Breakfast Programs with Action for Healthy Kids. I'm joined today by Vicki Coffey. She's a Nutrition Services and Healthy Schools Director for Richland Bean Blossom Community School Corporation in Ellettsville, Indiana. Vicki has been using Game One and will be sharing her experiences throughout today's webinar as we talk about the six steps. So before we get started, I want to make sure everyone is aware of the logistics. Once you've linked in, you'll see a control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. You can move that if you don't like where it's located, but it's usually housed on the right-hand side. You can use your telephone or speakers to listen to the presentation, but everyone is muted by default to avoid background noise and static. There is a dialog box at the bottom of your control panel. It's titled Questions and you can enter your questions in at any time. We will do our best to answer questions throughout the webinar, and any questions that aren't answered will follow up via email after the webinar. The webinar is being recorded, as I mentioned, and links to the recording, the handouts, and any links that we reference during today's webinar will be sent to you within the next two to three business days. Um, so if there are no further questions, we'll go ahead and get started. So here's today's agenda. Uh, we wanna make sure that you have the foundation of who Action for Healthy Kids is. So you'll be learning about Action for Healthy Kids and the Game On framework. We'll discuss how Game On supports your role as child nutrition experts in your school and how it can strengthen your role within the school. We'll provide you with some resources and ideas for each step throughout the webinar and end with some overall resources to help you be successful in your efforts to make your school a healthier place. We're going to be doing a number of polls throughout today's webinar. Um, and so when we see this little icon, I'll be putting up a poll. So if you bear with me for one second, I'm gonna go ahead and launch today's poll. We wanna know what your primary goal for attending today's webinar is. And if you don't see your primary reason for attending, enter it in on the question box and we'll go ahead and count that in too. But we're really interested to know why you're here, what you know about Game On, or what you're interested in learning about. Okay, we've got about half of the have voted. A few more seconds. If you haven't voted, go ahead and get your vote in. And if you've chosen other, if you would share that with us in the question box, I'd appreciate it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and share. So right now, it looks like most of you are just wanting to learn, about half of you are learning about Game On in general. 37% um, of you are looking to learn how to better collaborate with others, discovering resources, and learning from a school nutrition um, professional on how to implement Game On on their school. So great, those are great ideas and glad to hear from you. All right, so first let's go ahead and talk about who we are. I wanna give you some background on Action for Healthy Kids. Action for Healthy Kids' vision is a world in which every kid is healthy, active, and ready to learn. As an organization, we mobilize school professionals, families, and communities to take action that lead to healthy eating, physical activity, and healthier schools where kids thrive. We are made up of parents, teachers, students, and community leaders who have banded together to create healthier learning environments for our children. <clears throat> Excuse me. We believe that everyone has a part to play in ending the nation's childhood obesity and epidemic. Our programs, tools, and resources make that possible. We were founded in 2002 by former Surgeon General David Thatcher 
Today, we are more than 110,000 members and constituents in our network. We also partner with dozens of professional associations, government agencies, corporations at the national and local level. So the challenge, here it is. Let's look around the classroom um, and think about the, that kindergarten class. Unless we take action today, about half of those kids will be obese adults and counted among the millions of new cases of diabetes, heart disease, stroke and cancer, and other chronic diseases that are largely preventable. So from a health perspective, improving health opportunities at, school, at schools is an important work. But why are we talking about schools? Well, first of all, you are all part of the school system as child nutrition uh, professionals. And we're talking about schools because that's where our children are located. Uh, we also know that healthy children learn better. If it's not for improving the health of kids, schools should be addressing physical activity and good nutrition to improve academics, because we know schools are in the business of good academics and helping children to learn. This is what we call an action for healthy kids, our learning connection. Good food, active bodies equals kids equipped for success. More often than when we find that when children have access to healthy food, whether through school and through school breakfast and healthy foods in the lunch program at schools, they're better able to learn. If you incorporate physical activity into that, then that student is more able and ready to start their day and be successful the rest of the day. So as child nutrition folks that are all on the call today, we know, and you see it every day, that undernourished children tend to have low energy and are often irritable and have difficulty concentrating. They also score low on vocabulary, reading comprehension, and arithmetic tests. On the flip side, kids who consume healthy and well-balanced meals and who participate regularly in physical activity are better prepared for learning. Good food and active bodies, like we saw on the last slide, um, means that kids are equipped for success. As nutrition staffers, as I mentioned, you're seeing this every day, and you also see students who struggle because they're hungry. Whether that be due to poverty or due to other reasons, they're not, they're not getting fed. So either with breakfast or lunch or eating nutritious foods, these children are missing out. They're, you are there to feed children. Schools are there to educate students. So understanding that important link between eating healthy foods and succeeding academically is important when communicating with others in the school. And hopefully we'll be able to provide you the resources where you can feel confident having those kind of conversations with those in your school. But we know that often child nutrition staff feel separate from the school staff, whether it be because your, your, your organization is separate from in, within the district, you're not a, a, a district um, employee, you're a food service employee, or, or a school employee, you're a food service employee, your principal might not be your, your direct supervisor. We know there's a, a disconnect that often occurs between child nutrition departments and the school itself. So in addition to um, nutrition, we're also talking about physical activity. We're not going to spend as much time talking about physical activity today, and if you have schools that you have PE and health teachers, we have a webinar coming up next week um, targeting game one for those folks. So, but the bottom line is students that have an opportunity to be physically active in the day um, find that they're able to think better, um, they're more on task, and are doing better academically in both math, reading, and writing test scores. So, we're going to launch another poll we're going to be talking about something called the whole school, whole child, whole community model. And if you bear with me, Oops, let's see. All right, so we want to know how familiar you are with the whole school, whole child, whole community model.
40% have voted. Five more seconds. Okay, so for the most part, what we're seeing is that most of us on the call today are not as familiar uh, with the whole school, whole child, whole community model. This is the old coordinated school health model, but they've added in a few additional components. What I've done here is listed out all of the things that have to do with game one that we could find in the whole school whole child model and the that in blue is focused around where you lie as part of the child nutrition uh, department close this up all right so let me tell you a little bit about the whole school whole child whole community model and it's also called WISIC. Um, one of the things that we know is this is new. Um, it's been out for maybe about a year or so, um, and more people are grasping a hold of it because it is about the coordinated school health model, but it's adding in the components around mental health. And we know mental health has become a really big um, conversation point in schools, um, and we, we know that it's really integral to the, the overall health of students and the health of, and determining a healthy school. So one of the things that we are kind of taking this from a really broad picture, this being um, a framework and a way of positioning a um, policy, and we'll talk about policy in a second, but um, it's around this idea and model that today's school districts across the country are exploring and adapting this model to highlight the importance of school health. They're using the 10 specific components, or it used to be eight, um, which every school should have to ensure health, safety, and the well-being of their students, staff, and environment. Um, so, as I mentioned, we've already highlighted where child nutrition falls in, but it also talks about the different areas where game on covers. Um, and we're going to be incorporating more into some of the other areas regarding um, social and emotional learning and um, and uh, counseling um, into game on in the future as well. Uh, but our primary topic today is creating healthy schools using life, utilizing access to healthy food and nutrition education. This is part of the nutrition component of the WISIC model. This model is a broad idea that comes to reality through school local school wellness policies. We're not going to talk too deeply about local school wellness policies, um, but just give an overview that most of the wellness policies are being housed in district uh, child nutrition offices. Um, if there's not already a separate wellness office, it is required by the federal government that child nutrition programs incorporate um, a local wellness policy. But what I have done is make sure that we can see all of the areas where child nutrition plays a role in wellness policy. So it makes a lot of sense that our child nutrition staff becomes the experts on wellness in our schools. And giving you the ammunition that you can feel like an expert in your school is important. And that's one of the things that Game On can help you do. So let's talk about Game On. So Game One was developed to support schools, staff, students, and families in incorporating healthy food choices and physical activity into their daily lives and school environment, with the ultimate goal of getting national recognized as a health-promoting school. Game One helps students learn about and practice the habits of sound nutrition and physical activity. It provides schools with a framework and tools to integrate activities throughout the school environment. It engages the whole school community to eat better and move more, and supports long-term school wellness policies. Game On can serve as a tool to provide you with the resources and ideas to continually improve your wellness programming. It can be used to complement other programs your school may already have in place. So that's the basic of Game On. Who's using Game On? That's a good question. And one of the things that we wanna do is be able to help 
a variety of people that we know could be using it and could be using it more. Well, it makes perfect sense that maybe PE teachers are using it or those that are involved in physical activity. Um, and maybe even when we start thinking, well, child nutrition, it makes a lot of sense because we're talking about healthy eating. So maybe you're being partnered with at different times, but you can also be the lead when it comes to game one. And we're gonna be hearing from Vicki in a little bit too, as to how she's taken the lead at her school. But really, anyone that has a passion or an interest in healthy eating and or physical activity could be that champion around game one and could be that primary user. But anyone can use it and multiple people can use it within the school. Our goal is to help you to see the game on um, increases your expertise um, in healthy eating and or it allows you to share your expertise in healthy eating and nutrition. It creates supportiveness of healthy and active schools. It provides the opportunity for leadership and advocacy, both inside and outside of the cafeteria, and strengthens the profession. So, Game On is built around this idea that there are six steps. These six steps are very cyclical. You really do need to start at a certain beginning, but sometimes schools have different pieces already in place, so they can kind of jump in at different points. So it really doesn't, it's not a linear um, that you have to do with step one, two, and three, but you really do need to start with a basic. And the basic in the first step is around starting with um, building a team. We're gonna spend a lot of time on talking about teamwork and uh, working with others within the school because as I mentioned, a lot of uh, child nutrition folks have told us that they tend to feel separate, disconnected, or in a silo when it comes to working in their school. All right. So, um, how do you find Game On? Well, as I mentioned, Game On is a framework. It can be found on our website. And if you go to our website, you click on Tools for Schools. And there's a tab along the top. And then you click on Game On. And then it'll take you to the six steps. And you can click on those along the right hand panel. We'll send that link to you so you don't have to copy it down or do anything with it during this call. It's free, anyone can access it, anyone can use it. And what you're gonna also find is that many of the activities are really low cost or no cost activities. So you don't need a grant to make it happen. You don't need funds to make it happen. However, we do have funds that allow schools to help make those necessary changes. Um, sometimes schools need equipment, sometimes schools need training, sometimes schools need things and they don't have the funds to make those things happen. Um, each spring, we come out with grants and call them our Game On grants, and uh, you'll be able to learn more about them come uh, February. And if you sign up for our newsletter, you'll be able to get that information. Okay. I'm just doing a quick pause. I just noticed a couple of questions. Um, are you all seeing ac accessing game on? And if you just give me a quick one or two people chime in with yes on the questions box, I'll know that you're seeing the right screen. Okay, thanks, Kim. Thanks, Deidre. We've got it. All right, great. All right, so we're going to talk about step one, and it's the, the step one is gathering your team. And as I mentioned, we're going to spend most of our time um, talking about that because it is important to talk about um, this point of gathering folks together. So the first thing you need to do is getting those people together that are going to be able to make a difference. So there are active school health teams out there. We're going to hear from Vicki who's going to share about her active health school health team. Um, but before that, you know, you had to get people together to be able to talk about it and to form together. So some of you might be in the stage of jumping in and being a member of a team. Some of you are leading a team, or maybe there's no team at all. So we're going to talk about how uh, you can take your team to a different level, depending upon where you are. But anyone can be on a, team, on a school health team, and it could also be called the wellness team. Parents, teachers, students, school leaders, community members, they're all making a, a lasting impact when we combine our efforts. 
The key is to providing children with consistent messaging around health, nutrition, and physical activity. And it's working together and having a plan. Uh, Dr. Thatcher, our founding chair, has said that there's no limit to what we can achieve when we combine with the right people. That's very important to consider as you grow your school's health team together. So I'm going to launch a poll, and we want to know a little bit about if you are participating on your school's health team or wellness team. And if you don't have a team, you can just mark that as well. A few more seconds. Okay. All right. So it looks like most of you, uh, more than half, are a member of the team. Um, we have about almost 20% of you are leading a team as Vicki is, and we're going to hear from Vicki in just a moment, and um, a few of you are not on a team, and some of you do not even have a team. So, um, but for the most of us, we're on the call, are participating on a school health team. Great. All right. So, what is a school health team? In very general, general terms, school health teams exist to make schools healthier. They work, their work may include any of these things that you see on the screen. I'm not going to read them to you because we've got a lot to get through, but you can be reading this as I'm talking. At the district level, the team can work on large-scale projects, implementation of the wellness policy, revision of the wellness policy when needed. Um, but at the school level, the team works on the projects that have an impact just at that particular school. Sometimes some schools have taken their wellness policy and made it more stringent. Um, maybe they've changed things and added to it. You can't make it less than what your district policy is, but you can always make it more than what your district policy is. Parents, teachers, administrators, school staff, uh, child nutrition staff, youth, board members, community members can all be part of a school health team. As a best practice, we recommend that school health teams should be meeting at least quarterly during the school year. All right, so another poll. So as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna spend time talking about this idea of collaborating with others. We wanna know how it works at your school. Do you find collaborating um, or working with others is easy and natural, an effort, a struggle, um, and not sure if I'm not really involved in collaborating with others? All right, so for some, it's easy and natural. That's great, about a quarter of you are saying that's very easy and natural. A little over half are saying it's an effort that seems to happen with a few champions. Um, some are saying it's a struggle and it's sometimes hard to have that conversation. And um, uh, even more saying that um, I'm not really involved in wellness collaboration or wellness policy or wellness, health and wellness at my school. All right, so Vicki, we're going to talk to, to you now, and I think this is what a lot of folks had said they wanted to hear from. Um, so we've learned that uh, most of our folks are on some type of a team. We have some that were um, leading a team. Vicki, you want to tell us a little bit about your experience as, with a school health team at your school? Sure. Uh, so I am on each of the school's well, wellness team, 
um, as a member, and then I chair our district um, wellness team. Uh, along with that, uh, the nutrition services supervisors are on each one of their schools teams as well, because they actually know a little more about their their school and, and the needs of their children, you know, at that level, um, at K through two or three through five or whatever it might be. So it's important to involve those people um, as well. Uh, as far as the wellness team, you know, back in 2006 is when that was uh, created. And the reason why I ended up chairing it is because my superintendent at the time brought it to me and said, here you go, I need you to write this policy. And so, um, you know, I took it from there. And um, it's just been a great experience over the last decade. So have you had challenges um, when it comes to engaging others in the schools? Yeah, we've had a few challenges along the way, um, mostly due to lack of time. You know, trying to fit in another meeting into a packed schedule of teachers and principals is pretty difficult. Um, you know, and with the, the nutrition services department, mostly, you know, we're working 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., so we like to go home at 2 o'clock as well. Uh, but finding those uh, champions is, is key. Um, as someone said, you know, with your poll, um, and finding those champions that will put in the extra extra time and effort and, and make things, you know, make it to that meeting. But that's time time is always a challenge. So you talk about the champions. Do you find that that champion has a certain role at, at the schools or can it be a different champion depending upon the school? Oh, yeah, there is different champions um, at every school and the district level as well. Uh, a perfect example of a champion is one of my parents that um, actually came to my office with a complaint um, some years ago uh, about the amount of sugar that we were serving in the uh, Trix yogurt. Um, but but since then, um, it's been, she's been one of our biggest champions, um, a parent of three students in, on our team, and has uh, helped us to write grants and helped us quite a bit along the way. And she's been on our committee um, probably for the, about the last eight years now. Great. Yeah, I mean, you can't forget about parents, especially um, those sometimes who can be that squeaky wheel <laughs> can also become your greatest champion, too. So I think, um, you know, by working together and finding, meeting common ground, um, because obviously everybody has the same greater good in mind. No one's wanting to be counter each other. So, um, sure. you know, I think sure. it's, you know, it's important to, yeah, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, and in my experience too, um, when, when that parent came in to complain about that amount of sugar, that, you know, I knew she had a passion for what we were doing too. And it, you know, made me take a look at it and we did make some changes. Um, there was, I think there was only like a gram or two difference in the other, you know, yogurts that you would see at the store. Um, but still yet, you know, we, we didn't serve them as often and, um, and it ended up, you know, just being, being great. And her and I are good friends. We meet at Starbucks once in a while, uh, to talk about <laughs> some things, but, um, yeah, it's the it's those definitely those champions um, on your wellness team, and and as nutrition services folks, we are champions in that department, and um, and you know so that that is key too uh, to let you, your school know that 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 piece of that that component of the whole child um, model is your your thing, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what recommendations might you have to a child nutrition staff or a school at a school building who wants to collaborate but hasn't had that opportunity in the past or hasn't done it before? Well, my um, recommendation would just be to make sure that you are sitting on that wellness um, committee and then actually find ways that you can collaborate and bring it to them. Um, so, you know, chairing our team's been great, um, but quite often for principals and PE teachers and nutrition or health teachers and that, I will go to them and say, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's how you get that collaboration. How, how can I help you? Uh, and they'll, they, everybody wants help. <laughs> So, you know, or something for free, if you're doing a game on, um, 
grant and you bring stability balls to the classroom. Um, that's how one of the Game On grants for myself started, is that a teacher reached out to me. So she reached out to the chair person who happened to be the child nutrition person, but what came about from it was just something for physical activity, which, you know, is not maybe right up your alley, but you, you saw it as a need and, you know, went in that direction. So great. Um, and that's, you know, when we talk about um, whether you need to start a team, it sounds like most uh, on the call today have a team already in place. Um, so it might be more that you need to strengthen what you have or create more organization around what you have. So Game On supports that. And that's where you're going to find all the tips and strategies on making your team stronger, giving you um, the empowering you uh, to be able to be a part of that team and, and have your voice be heard, which I think is my next slide. So it's, yeah, and then that's what was my next slide. So it's, here's your opportunity to have your voice be heard. You're, as, especially like Vicki just said, you're the ones who are passionate about your work and the work that you do. Um, you're help, you need to help others to understand that, that child nutrition programs um, aren't what they might remember from their childhood and it's changed. Um, so perhaps there's a way to bring some food to a meeting or uh, be able to share some of the, great things that you're doing at, from your child nutrition um, and sharing that with students. If the school is important and you can do that through um, your meetings as well and, and being able to create greater buy-in for the work that you're doing um, and making that learning connection, you know, the, being able to demonstrate that, hey, you know how Susie comes to class every day and she's hungry. Did you know she started eating breakfast? Are you seeing any improvements? And then the teacher who's like, wow, yeah, I do. And thank you for sharing that. And, you know, I mean, you're probably one of the only people that see every student in that school at some point during that day. Um, maybe the administrator who might be greeting them as they come into the school building. But for the most part, those folks that are in that cafeteria see almost all of those kids at some point during the day. And then again, just like uh, Vicki said, ask how you can help. Okay, so our next two, we're gonna do kind of together because they really do kind of go hand in hand. Um, you know, a lot of us tend to, especially when it comes to, we've got an idea and we're ready to go and we just wanna jump in, but sometimes it's really important that we just pause and slow down and make sure that we are assessing where we are, so we know where we're going. So Action for Healthy Kids um, recommends that you use the school health index as your assessment tool. Uh, the school health index is, brought, is created by the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control. Um, in 2014, the school health index guided school-based obesity prevention and health promotion efforts and Action for Healthy Kids has worked closely, closely with the CDC uh, to offer an abbreviated version of the School Health Index that's focusing only on those pieces that are related to Game On, which are the nutrition and physical activity. Um, but it's, it is broken down into all of these other components that uh, we talked about earlier um, that are part of the old, um, uh, coordinated school health model, and then they just recently added additional components to be more in line with the WISIC model. So how can Game On and Step 2 help your school? So by taking the assessment, it helps you to be able to see where your school is. Um, it's linked in on our website. Um, and you can complete it on a portal. Multiple people can join in to be able to complete it. So while you might be able to answer the child nutrition questions um, in the module on child nutrition, there might not be, um, you might not have the same knowledge when it comes to the physical activity component. So, you know, that's another way of being able to further collaborate with others is by asking them to share their knowledge about what's going on in the school. And we also have guides that help you to do that. So it becomes a much easier process than it might sound 
I think a lot of people when they hear a school health index think, wow, that's huge. And it can be, but we're also talking about um, something that's very focused on um, just the questions related to nutrition and child um, physical activity. So once you take the school health index, you are then able to get um, a summary of what the results are. So you're able to see where you're lagging and where you're doing well. You're also given um, almost like a, a school card that says, you know, how ready you are for the, um, to pursue certification and recognition through Healthy U.S. Schools Challenge, Smarter Lunchroom. Um, and so, you know, by knowing where you are, it also helps you to determine where you need to go and what you might need to work on so you can be uh, recognized as a health promoting school. Following completion of the school health index, you are also given um, an opportunity to create and implement an action plan. It's really important to, now that you've assessed, you know where you're going and now creating a plan on how you're gonna get there. So the action plan will link to some of the game one activities. Um, and so every activity is linked to um, something that you can find through game one um, related to the, the challenges that you might be uh, facing can be resolved by participating in an activity of game one. And before we go on, I just want to pause for a second. And Vicki, so I'm, if you've been working with us for a while now, I guess you've taken the School Health Index a few times? Yes, uh, several years in a row. Um, and I love the School Health Index. Although it is a bit time consuming, it's well worth the time. Um, and it's, it's eye-opening for um, everybody involved, principal, PE teacher, health teachers, all involved and it gets you thinking um, about improvements that you need to make then. And then once you get the, uh, the tool, you know, with the graphing that, um, the actual assessment, uh, usually it's just right online with your thinking as well, um, you know, when you're filling it out. So like you said though, Ellen, it's great if you can take those pieces, you know, where the principal fills it out and they should, you know, the principal and the PE teacher and the health teacher. But um, what I found in, a, in the past couple of years, I had an AmeriCorps member um, working here, and I just had her go to the building um, and meet with each one of those folks and fill it out herself, because it was more of an interview with them. Yes. Um, and it seemed less hectic for them, you know. So uh, that's, that's been um, pretty successful. But it's the school health index is, is um, definitely it's a great assessment tool and it's very user-friendly. Yeah, and, and did you find um, the portal and updating it each year, um, that's one of the things that we have the ability, so you don't take it new each year, you're really just yeah. updating, you know, as you've made changes and things yeah, that's change been great. at the school. Um, in the last few years, you guys have um, really made it a lot more, uh, uh, yeah, easy to do and um, less work, if you will. So you're not recreating the wheel every year. Great, awesome. And then also when we talk about action planning, um, so when you guys make decisions as a team related to those needs that you discover in your, you know, your report card or your graphing, um, do you then create like who's going to do what and create a plan around that or what what are your next steps yes so the committee chair takes care of delegating the tasks so then um each we in our district level we each have um those characteristics uh for coordinated school health um separated out um so that i have team one and three over here and team or characteristic one and three, three over here two and eight over here so we have five teams and I have a, a, a lead for each one of those teams. And so that chair actually takes care of delegating tasks to each member. And it's, it's also imperative though, not just to get, delegate the tasks, but to make sure to include a due date and give them enough time, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, while asking for it and then giving yourself enough time a week or two earlier than what you need it so that you can, um, you know, send a reminder out in case you haven't had that actual task um, taken care of by one of your members. 
So I do send oh. reminders quite often. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Leslie. Hello? Ellen. Okay, so sorry, I lost the call. <laughs> ah, I, I called I you not. Leslie after, I'm like, Leslie, are you there? <laughs> I don't know That's why, I talked, right. to, I talked to Leslie yesterday. So. That's quite all right, no problem. All right, so, sorry folks um, for that little glitch. I was talking and then all of a sudden I had no one there. Um, let's keep moving along. All right, so the biggest thing I think most people find really excited about game on are the activities. Um, and so we're going to spend a few extra minutes here, um, and I want to move through. And I did do a quick check on our questions, and uh, so it looks like if you have a question, put it in, but we don't currently have any questions going right now. Um, so when you log into game on on our website and you pull up step four, it's where you can find all the activities and it looks like a school building. We've organized it so that it looks like a blueprint of the school. And on, if you click on any of the rooms or the areas of the building, you can find both eating better and moving more activities. Um, and no matter where you go, whether it's in the office, the classroom, the gym, the cafeteria, outside on the playground, you should be able to find both eating more, eating better, moving more activities. And so that's really important to, um, for you as child nutrition, because obviously you're like, oh, well, of course it's gonna be in the cafeteria and that's gonna be focusing on uh, nutrition. But if you're thinking about, well, how can I work with a classroom teacher who I know is giving out candy in the classroom? And maybe, you know, that's not a policy that you have going on, but maybe it's something else that you wanna tackle or, you know, something that's come to your attention. So, you know, there's ways to um, make those you know, healthy rewards, um, you know, make it um, a physical activity instead of giving the candy or something along those lines. We can do taste tests and taking it out of the cafeteria and have volunteers taking it to the classroom. So there's all kinds of different activities. So when you click on any of these rooms, it'll give you a list and you can kind of scroll through them and find them. Um, and you can also find them um, by listing and we and we highlight different activities of the month. Um, so all of the activities are organized into the school blueprint, um, like the one you see here. And then um, it's also important to note that you may be inclined to prim primarily look at the cafeteria, but we want you to think elsewhere from the cafeteria and how you can incorporate others around healthy eating. So why do we want to focus on healthy eating? Well, obviously we've talked about the importance of the learning connection when it comes to healthy eating, but it's also a learning. And so it's learning and the opportunity to build those healthy habits. Um, so a healthy school food culture supports classroom lessons. Food policies and practices reflect curriculum standards for health and nutrition rather than conflict with them. Also, healthy school food culture encourages consumption of nutrient-rich foods and contributes to good health. Students are less likely to suffer from conditions such as obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and cavities. Providing opportunities to eat better publicly demonstrates a school's commitment to promoting healthy behaviors among its students, families, and staff, sending the message that health is a top priority. And it also creates a culture 
of eating better that creates excitement about nutrition. When nutritious foods are presented in fun and engaging ways, students are eager to get involved. Um, and the same goes with physical activity. So uh, before we go on to too many other activities, um, you know, I know we talk a little bit about Game On Grants and the fact that we offer Game On Grants. Game On Grants are designed to impact both physical activity and nutrition. So I was wondering if maybe, um, Vicki, you could share a little bit about maybe some of the activities you focused on with either your Game On Grants or some of the, the um, activities that you particularly have found helpful um, with your schools. Sure. Um, one of the uh, best uh, activities that we do are brain breaks in the cl classroom, um, and we do those quite often. And um, like you said earlier, um, with the taste testing as well. So we usually do um, the teacher does the brain breaks, you know, pretty much daily. But then um, we provide uh, some healthy snacks. Um, usually once a month, we did. I believe it was sweet potatoes roasted sweet potatoes last month um, and then they told us the brain breaks that they did and we did a couple of those with them uh, the nutrition services staff we have um, a game on grant a few years ago where it was active gardening and we did um, a yoga stretch uh, session in the mornings and we worked with the PE teacher there then I'm um, doing those active gardenings with our studio uh, with our students. I'm sorry. Uh, one of the big things that we do is a health fair. It's a big community event around every Kid Healthy Week, um, and we have both physical activity booths and nutrition education booths. Um, and that and that was uh, fully funded through the community and some donations. So we didn't spend any uh, grant money uh, there. Um, on the uh, Every Kid Healthy Week Health Fair, which is great. And it's an annual thing, and this will be our three year. But I do want to say that Game On is awesome. Um, it can be used in many different ways to increase physical activity and uh, meet your nutrition goals as well. And it's not a cookie cutter grant, uh, which is nice, so that you can you can um, gear it towards your school, your school district. Um, and I like that kids and parents know what it is. Kids and parents know what Game On is, and that's pretty awesome. Great. You know, and I think what you kind of summed it up is it, it fits the need of the school um, because, like we said, you know, just in today's webinar, we saw very quickly that some folks were lead, some folks were on a, um, a school health team, and some didn't even have a school health team. So, you know, you're coming in at a variety of levels, and so each of your schools is probably at a variety of levels. Some are maybe um, at a level where you're either sort of you're res, you know, recognized as health promoting schools because you've got a lot of these activities and and they're all pretty coordinated and you've got an active health team and so you know you have all that and then others are maybe just starting and just wanting to make some changes and do, no matter where you're coming in you can um, find what you're looking for here and make it as big or as manageable as you need it to be so I'm glad you shared that part too. Oh, we do have a question that comes through, um, and this is it's the question's for me, but I wanted to pose it also to Vicki. Um, so the question's from Daphne, and she wants to know how often you give resources for securing more grants. Um, does Game on Grant continue for additional years or just one year? So each year we um, launch a grant cycle in the spring, and it is for the next school year. So Normally in February, we will uh, announce our grants and go live and you have a couple of months, usually about six to eight weeks to complete an application. Um, and we'll also help you connect with our state coordinators and staff here from Action for All Healthy Kids who can support you too in um, possibly putting together a plan um, for a game line grant. But um, it's a one-year grant, but I know Vicki just mentioned she's been funded for a couple of years. So, Vicki, did you apply each year for a grant and then have yes. a different plan? Or Yes, we do apply each year from, for um, a grant, and it's based off of the school health index results. So, we base, base it off of our needs um, from the school health index. So, that's, it's really important that um, 
you know, you do your school health index, index as an assessment tool first um, and, and find out pretty much what the school needs, you know, what the students need, what the principals need, and what the teachers need um, for those grant fundings. And that's where you get those champions, and that's where you get that what can I do for you um, piece, too. Awesome. So, All yes, right, so we're going to move on. Great. We're going to go ahead and move on. And if you have a question, go ahead and get it in. We'll make sure we try to give you some more time at the end to get your questions in. Um, so the bottom line is that the activities right now, we have about 80 um, healthy eating and moving more activities. Um, and we put it more on each day. Some are very focused on food service and some are very focused on physical activity and anyone can be incorporating them. Um, here it's just a, a sampling of some of the different activities you can find, um, ranging from healthy active, active parties to smart snacks. Um, we also help support, you know, give you an opportunity to do the Smarter Lunchrooms um, initiative, how to incorporate breakfast in the classroom, how to have a um, family fitness night or any of those things, and then incorporate a taste test into that, um, a health fair. I know Becky mentioned a health fair. So all of those things can be found um, in the Eat Better activities. Last two are regarding en being engaged with families and communities. We're going to do a quick overview just based on time on step five. It really is really important to be thinking about how we can engage um, others and volunteers to help make things happen. As Vicki said, time is a valuable commodity, and that is usually the biggest issue when teams struggle. Um, it's because there's just not enough time. So being able to incorporate volunteers to help is really important. And you'll be surprised. I mean, we heard Vicki share that, you know, a parent is one of the main contributors um, at her schools and in support of the health and wellness activities. Um, so be able to think about who you have in your community, who you have in, in your parent set, um, and don't be afraid to ask them. It also helps to make that connection um, and support a bridge that's not often there is between child nutrition and um, the parents too. Um, real quick, Vicki, have you incorporated uh, volunteers at your schools or in your health and wellness efforts? Yes, absolutely. Our community volunteers are amazing. And it's great to have not so familiar faces teach our students. They seem to be more engaged when it's someone new. And also our volunteers have the passion for health and wellness. I mean, think about it. If you want to volunteer and give your time away, you're going to care about what you're doing. That's what you're going to volunteer for. So yes, we, we couldn't do it without them. Great, 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 good to hear. And here are just some activities that um, a parent, a family member, a community volunteer could be doing um, as part of health and wellness, especially around school nutrition um, and child nutrition activities uh, through Game One. And each of the Game One activities has suggestions on how to incorporate volunteers. Um, so let's keep moving. Uh, last but not least, and this is really the whole purpose of Game One and the mission of Action for Healthy Kids is we believe so strongly that um, every school should, <laughs> excuse me, should be um, a health promoting school. And the only way to really know if you've reached that is if you are able to be recognized as health promoting. And you can do that through Healthy U.S. Schools Challenge, Smarter Lunchroom Initiative, um, or for example, the um, Healthy Schools Program for the Alliance for Healthy Generation. Um, oops. Oh, I want to go back. Go back, go back. There we go. Go back. Go back. Um, and I do have a quick poll. I want to do a quick see how many people might already um, be a health promoting school. Um, if you're not sure, you can say I'm not sure or I've never heard of it. Um, so are you currently recognized? We were recognized, but we, it, it, we, it's lapsed. I'd like to learn more. I'm not interested in becoming recognized. I've never heard of it. Um, 
Awesome. So it looks like um, there we currently don't have anyone that is currently recognized and that we have a few that were recognized, but they're um, need to reapply for their recognition and action for healthy kids game one program can really help you we have a wealth of um, resources available and if you get to this section um, or you've gone through most of the steps and you're feeling like wow we're really there and your school health index is saying you're ready you should take a look because the resources that um, are there can really help make the process so much easier than what you think it's going to do. Um, but the bottom line is the Healthier U.S. Schools Challenge is a, um, a recognition program for um, healthy schools. And um, it's voluntary. Not everybody has to do it. And there is some awards and um, monetary awards that make it worthwhile, but also it's around um, celebrating the work that you've done. And it's a way of getting the recognition for all the good things. We know, that especially in schools, sometimes that there's a lot of focus on the negatives. And this is another way of creating some positives in your school, some positive PR and positive um, going on. Um, you know, Vicki, you were saying to me earlier, where are you in the certification process or the recognition process at your school? We need to recertify. So you were um, certified. We were, yes, and we just need to recertify. Mm -hmm. uh, we are um, a smarter lunchroom school and healthy schools uh, school, but we do need to recertify for a healthier U.S. school challenge. Great. Well, we hope we can. Um, you can find some of those resources to help you do that. Um, you know, they come with tip sheets, we have mini webinars, checklists, and ways that you can involve everyone on your school health team. And this is another way of creating that leadership among um, our child nutrition because most of the um, Smarter Lunchrooms and um, Healthy U.S. Schools Challenge is based in, um, in the child nutrition and then in, it also incorporates physical activity in there too. But we have a ton of resources that we we're going to link you to. First of all, we've got our state coordinators that I'll provide you with a link so that you can find who's in your state who can help you. Um, we have monthly webinars, as I mentioned, next month, it's or next week, which is next month. Uh, we're doing the same webinar, but with a spin on this for PE and health teachers. So we'll make sure you have that link and you can share that at your schools. Um, and as we've mentioned, we do have grants and we encourage you to apply or start thinking about maybe go ahead and take that school health index. So you're really a step ahead um, of the game and you know which way you go. We have breakfast grants as well as game on grants that will be coming live in early February. Um, and hopefully we can also get you to participate in a follow up survey. And I'm going to just do one last quick poll because we um, we want to know more about how we can support child nutrition folks and especially in the school level when it comes to um, you know being a leader being taking that opportunity to um, share your passion with others in the school and we want to see if you'd be willing to participate in a survey it will not be the one that comes out with the follow-up material it'll probably happen in early january or february All right, so I'll give everybody a moment to vote on that. And then we'll be wrapping it up. Okay, it looks like everybody, um, most everybody is willing to participate in some way. A few folks who aren't sure, but we'll give you the opportunity to opt in or out when it comes closer. So thank you for your willingness to share your thoughts and opinions with us. Let me do a quick check to see if we had any other questions that need to come in that came in. Nope, but if you have any, you can follow up with me um, and I'll make sure you have my information. Uh, you can also follow us for more resources through all the social media platforms. Uh, we do do different postings and ideas that really can be used on a daily basis. Um, and if you haven't already, we encourage you to um, take the Every Kid Healthy Pledge, which means that you support um, and you, you're standing up that every child should be healthy and school should be healthy. And by doing it, you will also get be one of the first to find out when our grants become available because you'll receive our monthly newsletters. 
Um, thank you, Vicki Coffey. Thank you to everyone who joined the webinar today. And the follow-up material should be coming your way uh, by Monday of next week. Have a great day, and uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you.